Welcome everyone to uh, today's last session at Cultivate Africa. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I hope I don't have too much glare on my glasses. Um, I'm Lisa Schrader. I'm uh, the, the director of the Mercy Corps Agrofin programs uh, based out of Kenya. Uh, we are a, a program working across five countries here in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa funded by the Gates Foundation and the MasterCard Foundation. Um, and our mandate is, is to work with private and public sector partners across, uh, across Africa to help them develop, test and scale digital services for smallholder farmers. And the goal has always been to reach millions of farmers uh, today across our, our network of more than 130 partners. We're um, reaching over 14 million farmers. So we're excited about the, the traction that digital services are getting across Africa. And we're excited about talking to you um, around a, a model and a topic that we think is very important for the future of agriculture and agricultural transformation in Africa, and that is scaling ag tech innovation through digital platforms. Um, this is a, a great session for us to be able to highlight to you some joint work that we're doing um, with GIZ and Dahlberg, uh, looking at the anatomy of digital platforms that we think can help scale innovation across Africa, and also a really great opportunity for us to um, introduce you to some of the partners that we think some of the real pioneers in developing these, these platforms and ag tech innovators. So let me go ahead and, and go over to uh, our presentation now and uh, put it on full screen for you. Um, let me know if, uh, if you can't see it. Um, let me go ahead and introduce you really quickly um, to our, our, uh, our panel today. Um, so as I said, I'm Lisa uh, from Mercy Corps Agrofin, and um, we're going to be kicking off the session today uh, with a presentation from Noko Koyama, who's a partner at Dahlberg Advisors. Um, who's working with us on this study with GIZ on the potential for digital platforms in agriculture. Um, and then we'll be followed by a panel discussion um, with pioneers in this field, which include uh, Vinay Vutukuru, who's a senior agricultural economist at the World Bank, uh, working out of Kenya on digital platforms, tying together government and technology innovators here. Uh, Boniface Akuku, who is the senior uh, ICT director for the Kenya Agriculture and Livestock and Research Organization, CalRO. And finally, Marissa Conway, who is a tech innovator herself and the chief learning officer at Arifu. So you'll hear more about these great organizations in a minute. Um, let me go ahead and uh, just show you the, uh, the agenda really quickly. We'll start with a, an opening presentation. Um, sharing out some of the learnings that we have on the anatomy of different types of digital platforms that we think can drive agricultural transformation. Um, and Naoko will be presenting this. Um, and then we'll move into a panel discussion with all of our speakers for about 15 minutes. And then we'll open it up to audience participation and Q&A for the last 15 minutes. And we encourage you to put your questions in the chat for the full group. Um, and uh, I think... Uh, just giving you, I think I've already given you a short uh, overview about Agrofin and the work that we do in Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Zambia, Nigeria. Um, but we work with government and with uh, private sector and with agricultural companies and, and uh, development organizations um, to really see and push the boundaries of how technology can help build farmer uh, resilience and productivity and income um, with a, a deep commitment to reaching about to reaching 50 percent women. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand over to Noko Kayama from Dahlberg, and she's going to walk us through the high-level findings on our exploration of the anatomy of, of emerging digital platforms here in Africa, used as a springboard for Africa's tech innovators to really reach farmers. Noko, you want to go ahead? Yep, thank you, Lisa, and uh, you've done a great uh, introduction, so uh, I'm just going to right dive into it. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take the next 10 minutes just going through, uh, as Adisa mentioned, I think this is like a high level snapshot of what we are hearing in the, uh, this research on the uh, digital ag uh, platform and in its potential uh, in a way that it explains why uh, and what it can address the challenge of agriculture and how do they look like and also how can uh, tech innovators can plug in and take advantage of it. So uh, a very quick recap of the uh, uh, why and then just the context. Uh, as we all know, the smallholder farmers in Africa faces systematic, uh, sy systemic challenges across market, land, and skills and knowledge and a capital infrastructure. And women 
even if they are a, a major contributor to the labor force in agriculture, they face additional challenges. And a climate, challenge, uh, climate change is adding uh, additional complexity. Uh, next page, please. And here yeah, uh, we start to see uh, emerging uh, emergence of uh, digital innovators who can help to tackle these challenges that a smallholder farmers are uh, facing across the productivity, livelihood, and uh, gender equity and uh, climate change through innovations that uh, they bring in market access, uh, land related innovations, and the skill development innovations as well as innovation in the capital uh, access to finance and infrastructure. Next page, please. Uh, really going very quick. Uh, but uh, uh, when we look at the tech innovators, uh, especially when you are looking at the yeah, relatively emerging and new startup tech innovators, uh, they have a, a, a dynamism. However, they face a severe constraints to scale their solutions beyond their pilot and to reach a large number of smallholder farmers. Uh, why is that? Uh, because they lack information, uh, they lack how to get to the farmers, uh, and uh, they have limited, uh, limited resources to understand the customers. They have a challenge reaching a scale of a customer. Customer acquisition is very expensive, and the small startup can't do that immediately. They also don't have a relationship that a major corporate would have. Uh, including government, uh, agribusiness, and all other stakeholders. And yeah, uh, this is common for any tech innovators or innovators, but uh, they lack access to finance. Uh, next page, please. Uh, so this is why we have been looking at the digital agricultural platform. And the platform in a sense that yeah, it's a hub whereby the innovator can plug in to serve the smallholder farmers in conjunction with other innovators or platform leaders. Uh, this platform can bring the uh, uh, different stakeholders, different partners, including uh, policymakers, uh, digital innovators, as I mentioned, and uh, donors uh, to engage and enhance the productivity and improve the livelihood of the smallholder farmers. So how do they look like? Uh, in partnership with AgriFin and GIZ, we have reviewed these uh, four types of the uh, digital agricultural platform, we call DAPs, uh, that we start to see uh, their emergence in South uh, Africa. And yeah, we have mapped their uh, drivers, assets, uh, how they enter the, pro uh, uh, the sequence, the product, uh, the, the roadmap, and yeah, what their business model look like, how do they work with the partnership. Uh, we uh, looked at the yeah, four categories I mentioned. Those are uh, telco-led, agribusiness-led, bank-led, and the government-led. And yeah, uh, as we look through these uh, drivers and assets, uh, there are some commonality across the platforms and uh, some distinct, uh, distinctive uh, features. And uh, there are more that you can see in the report that we'll be publishing soon, uh, but a couple of uh, snapshots here. So one is that the uh, uh, core business of the platform, so that means that if it's the banklet, uh, I mean bank, uh, banking or financial services, so uh, the core business of the platform and the, their motivation, why they enter to serve the smallholder farmers, that kind of determines to what product they start with. Uh, so the bank, again, would start with the uh, access to finance product, uh, potentially coupled with some learning content. However, we uh, as the platform evolves, it will add the other product onto the platform. And yeah, uh, we see uh, some convergence that uh, this platform, even if they start differently, they start, uh, they converge to uh, provide a similar product as a portfolio. Um, similarly, we saw that a core business and the motivation determines the business model it takes. Uh, so, for example, for telco, it, it tends to be, uh, uh, this is a, a, the actual P&L, so this is a direct revenue driving. Uh, the platform needs to raise the, its own revenue and a profit margin. While in the agribusiness, we see more that a digital platform is the part of the core agribusiness. And obviously, the government tends to be more uh, serving really for the benefit of the farmers. Uh, next page, please. And a quick 
summary of the uh, uh, how we thought as the uh, uh, key success factors of this platform from the view of the platforms. Uh, so I move on to a view of the uh, tech innovator, but uh, this is from the view of a platform. What are the key success factors? Uh, there are six. So one is the vision and a particularly vision around the product and the roadmap. Rather than a studying is the ad hoc way of let me start with uh, finance and then add the learning. Uh, we need to have the uh, kind of roadmap start with what and add what. And yeah, that would allow the organization to build the capacity as it goes and engage the partner at the right time rather than at the last minute. Next one is the customers. Uh, why did the uh, different platform tends to target the different customers? We have seen the very limited case that uh, they do so consciously. And uh, even less the uh, uh, not many platform, or uh, let's say some platform engage the customer deeply and others don't. And we see uh, uh, the reward of engaging customer in the design and the quick feedback loop to tweak and reiterate the products to enhance the uptake and the usage. A business model uh, similar to the product vision and roadmap, it's important to have that upfront, uh, especially to have that internally aligned. Uh, there will be an investment required in the beginning and the management needs to buy into that idea of how long and when you want to see uh, this business to be uh, picking up. Uh, capabilities, uh, regardless of the model, there are some core capability that a platform must have. Uh, those are technology, uh, process, and then people, particularly ag expertise. Uh, as a part of the capability, field agent, uh, even if that can be outsourced, it is important to remember that digital is not the replacement of the field force. So field force is the must have for that DAP. Uh, partnership, I come to that, but uh, uh, the partnership tends to help the product diversification and expanding a channel from the view of the uh, uh, the um, DAP, the platform leaders as well. And uh, finally, enabling environments such as regulations, digital penetration, digital literacy, uh, innovation ecosystem, and the ag ecosystem. Uh, it's important for uh, DAP, the platform leaders, to assess them and uh, design and uh, sequence the platform accordingly to take advantage of the enabling environment as well as to go around it if there is some uh, limitations. Now, moving on to the next slide, uh, the core of this discussion today about TSO. What does it mean for tech innovators? As mentioned, the platform can address the innovators' constraints that are information, customer acquisition, relationships, and investment funding. And yeah, uh, this is the kind of a snapshot so, shot of what we heard from our tech innovators working with the partners. On the left-hand side, I have what's good about it. On the right-hand side, what's uh, difficult about it. So uh, Tech Innovators is finding the working with the platform, uh, giving them a scale and a speed of a scaling. Um, they give the uh, brand and the credibility with farmers. Uh, we constantly hear from the farmers that yeah, they went with the, this provider because we know them, and that's really important. Um, the uh, Tech Innovator can also get the uh, access to quality uh, the channel services like a field agent by uh, working with the platforms. And the, uh, also because as a uh, technology innovator plugs in, they get a synergy with other product. Uh, that means also farmers are empowered uh, and given that a scale potential uh, they might mobilize additional funding, either from the platform leaders themselves or uh, external funders. What's challenging about it? Uh, misaligned vision, uh, misaligned speed of growth. Sometimes the uh, platform players are too quick, uh, so telco tends to be too quick for some of the uh, uh, boots on the ground kind of partners. The banks tend to be very slow for tech, agile tech innovators, for example. Uh, sorry, the conscious of the time, I'm just going to go very quick. As our challenges are, are, are stringent or unclear data sharing policy, what to do with my data, what's going to happen to my data, a mismatch on business model, I want yeah, a fee for service, but they want us to do uh, a co-invest, long procurement process, 
needless to say, and the, uh, uh, the limited partner engagement capacity from the platform side, hence the, uh, I had a meeting last month and I haven't heard anything back. Uh, and then uh, finally, in uh, occasional cases, we've seen a duplication of effort by the platform leader and this um, being kicked out from the uh, platform. So with these, uh, uh, so it's clearly there is advantage of going with the platform or the big platform. Uh, however, uh, in, as, a, as I say in the next page, we need to know, in, uh, tech innovator needs to know how, what to do, how to engage the uh, platform. Um, so, uh, uh, this has, given the time, should I read it through? I think we can go ahead and discuss it in the in the uh, in the panel. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, there are things to do uh, across the partnership process. So there are things to do before partnership. Uh, make sure you also have a product roadmap, and the hopefully finance partners as well, so that you can uh, catch up with the scale as you explore the uh, partnership. Uh, go with the, uh, somebody who can share your vision and the priorities. Uh, you don't want to go with somebody who thinks that your product isn't just nice to have. Um, the, uh, uh, now, in a uh, uh, more practicality side, uh, important to understand and uh, develop the relationship who's the key decision makers in the organization. The platform data tends to be big and have many divisions. You need to engage the right person. And you need in the discussion, you need to, you need some patience and an investment of a time. And yeah, uh, during the discussion, uh, make sure to discuss the solid financial analysis and you don't postpone the revenue sharing discussion. Uh, that could come up later and surprise you. Uh, and then same similarly, data ownership, data sharing, who owns, who can do what, that's also the upfront conversation to have. And as you work together, uh, clearly define the roles and responsibility and the, uh, define the communication mechanism and the uh, troubleshooting mechanism. Uh, so those are very quick, uh, uh, rapid principles, but uh, this is based on our research as well as the uh, five years working with the AgriFin uh, facilitating the partnership. Uh, very last. Uh, just a very quick preview uh, what's coming. Uh, so uh, uh, the, we are GIZ, Mercy Corp, and Dalberg are publishing a white paper around the, uh, uh, the digital agricultural platform blueprint. Uh, this is based on the uh, sort of compilation of a five, six years of work we've done together and the uh, uh, additional interviews with the 40 plus companies. Uh, and it will include uh, the key findings and principle from the platform's view, some recommendation for the platform and donors, and the, uh, some findings around how to use this to scale the technology innovators and some angle around the climate and gender goals. Uh, so that's it. Thank you and the, uh, I hand back to you, Lisa, for a panel discussion. Thank you so much, Naoko. That was, a, that was a great snapshot. And I know that you've been digging into this for several months now. So it's it's nice to see it beginning to, you know, come down to some key principles. And we look forward to sharing that paper out. Um, you know, from our perspective at, at, at Agrifin, you know, we have mobile network operator partners with 1.3 million farmers registered. We have government platforms with 5 million farmers registered. So we know that these platforms can become scale vehicles for a wide range of important types of services. Um, but, uh, but, but negotiating the partnerships, figuring out how the platforms work um, is still an art, not a science. Um, and so we're looking forward to getting into our panel discussion today to talk about where we are, what's the potential, the challenges, next steps, Steps. And just to just to recap, um, Naoko will be joining us as a panelist, but also Vinay Vutukuru is a senior agricultural economist at the World Bank, uh, Bonifasa Kuku, senior um, director of ICT at Calro, and Marissa Conway, the chief learning officer from Arifu. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll stop sharing. And um, I'll ask Vinay um, if, if he wouldn't mind um, kicking us off and talking about the, the Million Farmer Platform, uh, which is a really exciting development at the, at the World Bank. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, pleasure to be part of such, uh, such a wonderful panel. And uh, thanks now for a very great uh, presentation. Uh, I think uh, 
just to, I'll, I'll take uh, three, four minutes to set the context in which we had kind of launched this 1 million platform and also share where we are and where we would like to be in the next three, four years. Uh, so we at the World Bank, we have uh, two national projects, the National Agriculture Rural Inclusive Growth Project and the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture Project, which cumulatively have an investment of nearly $500 million and have a presence across all 45 rural counties here in Kenya. Uh, and uh, in a nutshell, the project is about mobilizing a million farmers cumulatively uh, into farmer producer organization, enabling access to inputs, extension and market linkages for these farmers, and also making uh, the accompanying value chain investments. So very early on, we realized that one of the binding constraints for enhancing productivity and profitability for these million farmers is the last mile service delivery. And it's uh, to tackle this constraint that uh, we launched uh, a challenge in uh, April 2019. Dalberg were part of it and uh, Mercy Corps was a very, very critical partner going forward. And of course, Calro is one of... Uh, 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 you know, the partners who are part of that uh, challenge. And through a rigorous selection process, we identified 14 acted startup across four areas, uh, productivity enhancement services, financial services, market linkages, and data analytics. And uh, we uh, facilitated partnership between these 14 startups and uh, the 16 counties out of the 45 counties because we wanted to do this in phases. So as we speak, these 14 startups, in fact, there are three more startups which have uh, become part of the platform, are working with the farmers who are part of these two bank investments and uh, are uh, enabling access to a range of services for farmers. And uh, the, the logic was very simple. We thought it's a win-win-win kind of a formula for farmers the act at startups, and also the public sector or the county governments. For the farmers, as I had mentioned before, last mile service delivery is a problem. So this uh, kind of initiative helped them access bundled services, uh, inputs plus market linkages, financial services plus extension services, right at their doorstep through a digital, uh, digitally enabled way. For the active startups, the biggest advantage was they were able to scale up uh, without uh, kind of investing heavily on farmer acquisition because the farmer acquisition cost or what we call the public good investment was coming through the bank projects, whether it's mobilizing farmers, building their database, uh, training these farmers and all that. So that was coming in through the bank projects uh, being implemented by the county governments. For the county government, this was an attractive proposition because they very well knew that last mile service delivery is a problem. So by bringing in this active startups, they knew they are transforming the last mile uh, service delivery. So we have, uh, uh, you know, gone through uh, this partnership for the last 12 months. And so it has seen COVID. And in fact, I must say, during COVID times, we've seen that the county governments have realized that these active startups have an advantage because a lot of them actually continue to do business uh, even without a face-to-face -face interaction. But what was critical was, as now mentioned, through these projects, we have youth who are kind of from the same villages and who are called community facilitators. So they are like the human interface at the last mile, uh, which are complementing the digital technologies which are brought together by these accurate startups. So I think we've kind of demonstrated a, a fairly robust model. And our aspiration is that over the next three, four years, we can a, a expand the geographies, perhaps go to all 45 counties in Kenya, expand the number of active startups who could come into the platform uh, and uh, therefore cover a million farmers. So now, what are the essential ingredients? A, we need partners like Mercy Corp, like Dalberg, who can provide incubation support, uh, you know, business uh, uh, support to these active startups. B, uh, we, ne we need uh, access to reasonable uh, credit for these active startups because grant funding can only take them uh, uh, to a certain extent for them to really grow from a, a, a 15 to 20,000 farmer company to a 100,000 farmer company. They need access to credit uh, at a reasonable rate. 
And uh, lastly, we need a strong public sector which is willing to provide this authorizing environment, which is willing to put in uh, the public good investment. And we need people like Boniface and Calro who can create this kind of an authorizing environment. So if we can have these three ingredients, we are confident that over the next three, four years, all the one million farmers who are part of the bank projects can actually access uh, services uh, uh, by leveraging digital technologies. I I'll stop here, Lisa, and happy to take questions. Great, and and you know, Vinay, I think uh, you know from our our perspective as Mercy Gore, played a small role in, in in kind of helping build that bridge um, between county governments you know, who really have the mandate to help farmers and, and Kenya's tech innovators. And it's a big gap. So what lessons did you learn about that, that process? I know a lot of the county governments felt really uncomfortable with technology. It was, they didn't know how to pick the right one, how to, you know, how to introduce, what did, what did you learn about bridging that gap between tech innovators and, and, and county government that's responsible for serving farmers? Thanks Lisa for asking that question because uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, while th this is really the ideal kind of partnership, uh, there are uh, kind of uh, typically, uh, uh, I would say, issues in terms of these two entities coming together, the public sector and the private sector. I would say three things are important. One, uh, it might sound very kind of qualitative, but it's an attitudinal shift. And we have seen that counties where the county leadership inherently believes that this is the way forward and are really willing to trust the private sector and invest on them, they've done very well. So that's factor number one. Factor number two, I think on the active startup side, they also need an attitudinal shift. They need to be patient. I think Naok also mentioned that, that uh, things are going to move slightly slowly, but what the public sector brings to the table is scale. I think that's very, very important. And thirdly, as I said, Again, county governments where they made the public good investment, A, which is mobilizing farmers into farmer producer organizations and having those youth on the ground who can really complement the digital technologies on offer by these active startups. So they have performed much better. So I think a combination of these three factors have determined which counties have moved faster or which active startups have moved faster and which have not moved that far. So these are key lessons. And I think as we go forward, we will definitely incorporate these lessons uh, into our strategies. Thanks so much, Vinay. And I think that's a great segue um, to Boniface, uh, Boniface Akuku, who is the uh, ICT director for Calro. And, you know, it's been such a pleasure to work with Boniface and his his technology vision. I mean, he's won all kinds of awards across Africa um, for really kind of bringing a technology vision and a shared uh, a shared transformation vision. Um, you know, to agriculture in Kenya and regionally. Um, so Boniface, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your work at CalRO and how you're building a data hub for agriculture and what does that mean for CalRO as you look at becoming a platform working with technology innovators? Uh, thank you, Lisa and uh, participants. Yes, um, we, for the last, uh, I think, two years, we have been building a uh, a number of digital platforms, but now we are putting all that into a digital hub or a digital platform, a data platform. <clears throat> we started by developing uh, different digital solutions or, or for farmers and for other stakeholders. And we realized that um, we need to bundle all these into one platform so that we are able to offer bundled services from uh, uh, which could help farmers from pre-production to post-harvesting and to market. And what we are doing is that uh, we are established a big data platform with the support of World Bank. Uh, be nice to talk to about it. And the, the big data platform is a data hub or is a digital platform that will enable all stakeholders, farmers, partners to come together and to provide that enabling environment that can create a partnership between different stakeholders. Uh, previously, public sectors worked in silos and private sectors worked in silos. So there's been no partnership between private sector and public sector. And as I always say, 
there are things that public sector can do very well, and there are things that private sector can do very well. So building an enabling environment that brings the two parties together to work in one, in a single platform, will scale uh, uptake of digital solution and will lead to greater impact on farmers' life. And we also realize that it's important to build infrastructure and e-infrastructure because there are issues of trust. Uh, farmers seem not to really trust private sector and therefore uh, complementing, uh, bringing in a public sector led model, which now on board all the private sector activities and on board all the digital innovations uh, and all the, what the private sector is doing creates trust. And that trust will actually increase uh, uptake of these solutions that are being built by tech innovators in the private sector. So I think uh, the idea of trust can be solved uh, by actually establishing uh, a digital platform that is actually public sector led. Thank you, Lisa. Maybe I could take questions uh, regarding this. Uh, and that's what we are doing. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, one of the questions that's come from, from the audience already is about how platforms can be relevant in, you know, in, in the context of climate change. And I know that you're you're one of the people I always listen to um, around climate change. And you know, we we work with other platforms like Safaricom's Digifarm platform. They can sign up two hundred thousand farmers in a month, but Safaricom does not know anything about climate change and its impact on on agriculture. So they've partnered with Calro um, to make that happen. So how can how is how how can Calro be part of, of helping as a platform of helping all of us address the, the the threats of climate change, especially for smallholders? Thank you, Lisa. I think that's a question which is in my heart. Uh, I was not able to speak about it because of time, but I would say that uh, the main driver that drove us into establishing a digital platform is climate change. Uh, there are three questions that we need to answer to the, to the farmers in the wake of climate change. What to plant or to keep, how to plant, when to plant it or when to keep it, how to keep it or how to plant it. And these questions cannot be answered without platforms that have intelligence. Uh, you, for example, it's, it's become very unpredictable to know when it will rain. And even when you know by how much, because the climate has changed. And therefore, the digital platform, and we have developed a platform called the Kenya Observatory Platform, which basically predicts weather forecasts in the next 14 days, gives you the last 30 days and the last seven days. And it only not just give you the, the probability of the rain, but also give you the chance and amount. And all other climatic variabilities, temperature, wind speed, cloud cover. And these are very important for decision making because uh, once the, this, the, the platform provides this solution in a very granular way, and by the way, is able to give you context specific and location specific information. So I will be able to get the weather forecast for my farm, not for my neighbor's farm. And therefore, this helps in optimizing decisions so that I can make decisions what to plant. And also, uh, for example, for you to apply fertilizer, you need enough moisture in the soil that can be able to absorb the fertilizer. And therefore, if you don't know the amount of rain or the amount of moisture in the soil, you will waste your money. Some farmers have been wasting their money. They buy the fertilizer, they apply it at the wrong time, and the fertilizer are not absorbed. So whereby knowing the moisture content in the soil alone is, a, is a, able to help farmers to, to save, not to waste the resources that they're investing. Uh, and uh, issues of pests and diseases are dependent on climate. And uh, when we are able to predict the climate change, uh, the weather forecast, the, the wind speed, the, uh, like for example, the desert locust that we just had recently, it was because of climate change. And with the digital platform, you're able to know how they are moving because they follow the wind speed, uh, the, wind, uh, the wind movement rather, the wind direction. And therefore, you're able to predict in uh, early time they are likely to fly. And then with the breeding also, 
depend on certain climatic change. And therefore, you're able to see, we are going to see multiplication of swarm of locusts because the climate is favorable to them. And therefore, the policy makers and other stakeholders can take the right at the right time when to spray, how to mitigate aspect of climate change. And therefore, <clears throat> digital platform is the single most important uh, uh, aspect of mitigating effect, negative effect of climate change is, a, is one of the most important, single most important aspect of being able to predict with some level of accuracy of what is the future or likely to look like so that the decision being made by the farmers, the colder policy makers are actually informed by evidence driven from data. And it's also the single most, uh, again, important aspect that can help in insurance because uh, how would, uh, when we take insurance, for example, to cushion farmers in the event of a loss. Now, digital platform provide evidence to, for, to enable insurance companies to compensate farmers, as well as to enable the determination of the premium and even the determination of whether you should take up insurance or not. So I can speak over and over until tomorrow, Alicia. So let me leave it at that point. But lastly, the pandemic, like the, 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 what we just gone through, the the COVID-19, <clears throat> it proved that uh, when people could meet physically, uh, we were able to still ex offer extension services to farmers through the, our digital platform, sending SMS, uh, direct them to our call center, sending them uh, to our more, uh, port web portals and our, our, our different apps. So, I mean, um, it's the way to go. And uh, uh, beyond climate change, it's also important for other uh, environmental uh, changes and other natural disasters like COVID-19. Uh, Lisa, let me leave it there uh, because I think uh, I can talk in this area until tomorrow. Uh, we really appreciate it, Boniface, and I know we've got, you know, the next five years are going to be very critical, and, and we have to be able to get a lot of science, precise science, directly to farmers, and that's going to take, I think, power of platforms, um, but also power of the innovators who can really communicate directly with, with the with the farmers. Um, and so our next panelist uh, is uh, Marissa Conway, who's the chief learning officer for Arifu. And Arifu is, a, when we first met Arifu a, a while ago, I think they had 20,000 farmers on their platform. And now there are over a million farmers. Um, and they've really uh, been able to touch a lot of people's lives with their chat bot. And Marissa, we've only got, we've got just less than 10 minutes left in the session. But if you could tell us a little bit about Arifu and how your journey has been growing a tech innovator a great tech innovator, you know, working on your own, but also working with platforms. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so Arifu is an ed tech company. We've created a free digital advisor. Um, so far, 1.4 individuals have um, come and opted into learning with Arifu across our different partnerships. Um, this is in six African countries right now. So Arifu has an open marketplace where many partners can come in and um, either inform learners about products and services or uh, skills content. And we also have content available on uh, platforms, which is what we're talking about today, um, such as Safaricom Digifarm, KCV MobiGrow, Equitel MyLife, and IITA's um, Akilamo Decision Support System. <coughs> so through our partnerships, we've, um, we provide services such as skills information and trainings on complete value chains, all the way from land preparation to helping farmers find a market. Uh, we also have um, started working on some innovations where we're actually using input-based recommendation systems to be able to take in input about farmers, um, specific farm uh, farm sizes, farm spending, their spending availability, and then be able to make give them um, real time recommendations on what they should do and what kind of ROI they can expect to have. Uh, we also do things like weather forecasting. Um, and now in a lot of our partnerships are connecting farmers to input suppliers, uh, financing and buyers. Um, some of what our partners experience is what we deliver is a kind of a end-to-end -end solution where we're designing the content and using best practices in digital design, uh, what we've kind of learned over the last six years. And then also we have a platform, the chatbot platform that delivers the, the content to individuals over SMS, over WhatsApp, 
uh, as well as analytics where partners can come on and see, you know, what is it that pe what is it that farmers or other learners are interested in learning about? What are they engaging with most? Uh, what types of skills are they learning and what are the knowledge scores that they're achieving on the different capa um, capacities? Yeah, um, and so for learners, how they experience it is they might come into one of our partner platforms or they come in directly through a Refu OM and they can search through a library of content. Um, I think some of the cool things about being part of ecosystems such as Digifarm or KCP MobiGrow is that there's a lot of different support services right there. So an individual could come in and get access to content, but they also have in access to um, input um, uh, vouchers or they might also have access to a loan. And what we do is we can provide the skills training as well as information on those products and services to help increase trust and, and usage. Um, I think that's it for now. I hope I did okay on time. <laughs> You're a champ. Um, what are the questions from the audience? Uh, specifically for you was what are the most common and urgent challenges that, you've, that you have to consider when you look at a new platform for partnership? Um, okay, so with a new platform for partnership, I guess it's, you know, uh, it's so great because you can scale quickly. We, I think on the platforms that we have 200,000, 500,000 learners on them and that you can achieve really, really quickly. Like I said, you can also, you know, connect to different products and services. Uh, there's a lot of synchronization that has to happen. <laughs> so you have to have, you have a lot of partners working on them. And so I think some of the challenges are making sure that you know, everybody is collaborating and working together really well um, so that the user experience is very streamlined. Um, I think the other thing is, is a lot of these uh, platforms, you know, are funded sometimes by grant funding. So uh, you need to kind of prove your value proposition very quickly. And um, if there's not that access to the right data to show, you know, uh, learning has helped achieve this, also this behavior change. I think that can also be a challenge that uh, we have to overcome. So we also we oftentimes not only are looking at how do you how do you work together to make sure the user experience is well, but how do we make sure that we have the right data accesses to actually be able to measure you know the performance uh, both in the learning side, which is what we have access to, like what are people engaging with, but also um, on the behavior change side, how is that actually impacting sales how, on inputs? Um, how is that actually impacting like safe uh, usage of loans? Um, and and without that, it's hard to know you know how to course correct your content information uh, uh, as well if you if you can't access that. Great, yeah, we've got we've we've got several questions from the audience, um, and uh, not a whole lot of time left, so I'll try and and, and pitch them out. Um, one of them I think is uh, is really well suited for Nao Naoko. If you're still online, um, it says, "What kind of organizations are best suited to operating and scaling digital platforms for farmers, and why?" And obviously, we don't have the mobile network operators here on the panel. We don't have the ag co's. We don't have uh, the banks here on the call. Um, you know, we. we you know, we've got we've we've got you know platforms and innovators from government. What would you what would you say are the kind of key strengths and weaknesses of different types of platforms? Sure. So the to the question from our audience, I hate to act like a consultant, so it really depends. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. As Lisa says, there are uh, different strengths and the yeah, weaknesses, and the yeah, uh, how you see that your strengths are. I think it depends on so that you meaning tech tech startup, uh, um, and then also enabling environment uh, that would determine. Uh, so uh, just across the four types, um, the telco obviously they have a strong technical expertise. You don't have to hire additional tech people; they are usually in house. And yeah, uh, uh, depending on the country and the player, they have a massive outreach uh, customer base that uh, they can lead out to. And yeah, it does not cost to communicate with the farmers uh, sending SMS and data. However, uh, they tend not to have any ag, uh, agricultural or the field experience. And even the field agents, uh, airtime agents, or mobile money agents are very different people than the uh, field agents that are needed to engage the farmers. So it's a building from the scratch. Um, the banks, 
um, the uh, different kind of uh, strengths, but uh, uh, somewhat similar uh, uh, challenges. Uh, the banks, uh, obviously, uh, they have a huge capital, and so uh, uh, going into the uh, finance and the managing a credit that can be done is a huge asset, uh, given that the uh, access to finance product uh, tends to be uh, one of the core product on any platform and then a huge needs from the farmers. Um, the uh, agribusiness lead has the different strengths and uh, gaps. Uh, so obviously they, they work in the agricultural sector, so they know uh, agriculture, they know uh, work through the season, uh, they might already have the uh, analog network of the, the, uh, the farmers and the field agents. They may already have a presence as the off takers or input providers, so that can be leveraged. However, they don't have the, uh, they tend not to have a technical expertise. And the, uh, uh, off the record, I think they tend to think that they know what they're doing exactly even when the digital. So I see them taking a less um, help from outside than the other forms. Uh, but uh, that's my personal view. <laughs> uh, and then uh, finally, government institutions uh, and yeah, uh, Bonifas can, and then uh, Vinay obviously can speak to this uh, more, but yeah, I think uh, one is that uh, uh, they are not chased by donors or uh, uh, rush to make a, a sustainable return, but uh, really the core focus on making a farmer's productivity and a life better. Uh, hence, that gives the, uh, some leeway to work on the innovation. Uh, they have a strong, uh, so it, when it's house, housed at the organization like a Kaolo or uh, any other uh, agricultural organization, there is the uh, in-house uh, expertise of agriculture, tends to have the field, field force. Uh, however, uh, given any uh, government Im implementation body, uh, they may face some uh, uh, internal capacity uh, because the uh, uh, the funding uh, uh, funding needs. Sorry, just pause me. Let me pause here. Thanks a lot, Namoko. That's a that's a, a a really great kind of highlight of of what we're hoping will come out of this this GIZ paper, the white paper, and the platform blueprint documentation that will be coming out uh, shortly. We're really excited about that, and we've got a lot of great um, questions from the panel, but we're already a little over time. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just take one of the questions as as my wrap up, um, and that is how did uh, how have your your platforms performed over the pandemic, um, and and actually. It's, it's, I'm glad somebody asked that question because I was thinking about it today. You know, we've certainly seen tech innovators who have um, who have gone down because of the platform. Uh, because I'm sorry, because of the pandemic. Um, and I was thinking today uh, that the tech innovators who've been part of platforms have had a lifeline and a resilience line um, that I think has been really important. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to stand on your own as a tech innovator um, in the face of so many disruptions in markets, et cetera. So there's strength in platforms. Um, we've also seen, you know, um, this, this massive ability to scale among platforms means that you can reach a lot of people very quickly um, with important information, uh, with important services, you can engage them. Digital digital services allow for two-way communications. So we've been able to, with our platform partners, reach 14 and a half million farmers in the last six months on platforms uh, in a digital environment related to you know both COVID um, and and desert locusts and making farmers part of the solution, uh, making farmers part of the reporting solution. If they know that there have been COVID outbreaks, wow, I, where can I get tested for COVID in in my in my rural location? Um, you know, can I give COVID to my cattle? You know, these kinds of things are are serious. What markets are open, which are not? These are the kinds of environments where we can hear farmers on digital platforms at scale. We can respond to farmers on digital. Uh, channels. We can also make them part of the epidemiology and the solutions uh, when farmers say desert locusts are in my area. Um, we can report that out to governments and, and FAO, UN agencies and help them respond. So I think that um, I think platforms do have a, an incredibly important role to play um, in scale up um, and in leapfrogging uh, huge amounts of, 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 uh, of challenges that tech innovators face. However, uh, as, as Naoko pointed out, um, it's still early days um, uh, for brokering these partnerships and these business models, um, and uh, you know, and we're still trying to figure out quite a, quite how to make that work. 
Um, but one thing that we've definitely seen is that a lot of partners, a lot of platforms are stronger actually when they work together, when the banks work together with the MNOs, work together with the government, work together with the ad coast. That's also a place where we see a great deal of synergy. Um, so thank you uh, for joining us for this session. Sorry, we've gone a little bit over. And thank you so much to our fabulous panelists. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks, Boniface, Vinay. Thanks, Noko. Uh, thanks to um, you know the organizers at Cultivate Africa. And we hope that this has been able to contribute um, to the dialogue. And uh, we hope to be streaming more documentation to you soon and working with you. Feel free to contact uh, Mercy Corps Agrofin at any time if you've got a model, a question, uh, a, a partnership you'd like to run after. That's our job. We'd love to help you do it. So thank you so much. Um, everybody have a great night and uh, rest of your event.